All right, y'all, what is up? And welcome back. And thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So yesterday, my brother and I decided to take the boat out and we wanted to try to do a little bit of Spanish mackerel fishing. So we headed out to the North Jetty. And whenever we got out there, the water didn't look how we had expected it to look. It was a little off, a little bit too windy. And the bite was kind of slow. So instead what we did is we ended up fishing at the boat cut on the North Jetty. If you're from around here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A little ways down the jetty, there's a boat cut that basically goes from the bay to the beach side or actually from the channel in the bay. It's a pretty good spot to fish. I've never really fished it myself except for a couple of times, but today we did and we had a little bit of luck. So I figured I'd take this opportunity because I only have about five or 10 minutes of fishing footage but I wanted to show y'all how we were fishing that current. And I think that this can be applied in a bunch of different areas, whether it is fishing a back lake in the bay, the boat cut, any type of really cut channel pass, any narrow pinch point where water flows through, where there's a lot of current, you can use this technique that I'm gonna show you right here. And it is a good way to find fishing current. And I think it's gonna help some of y'all out. So I got my whiteboard set right here. I'm not an artist by any means, but I'm gonna try my best to explain how I like to fish current in really any situation. And hopefully this will help some of y'all out next time you're trying to find some fish. So let's get right over to it. And then after I explain this to you guys, I'll roll the fishing footage from yesterday so y'all can see it live. Okay, so here is my picture right here. Like I said, I am not an artist. I know this just looks like a piece of wood broken right in half, but this is my jetty rocks right here. And this is my diagram of the Bolivar Galveston North Jetty. So this is gonna be the channel, the bay side, and this is going to be the beach front. All the water flows through right here, right in between the jetty. This is a boat cut. And then this is where we were parked fishing. So the tide yesterday was outgoing, which means that it was flowing from the bay towards the beach, just like that. And we were parked right here on the outgoing side. Whenever fishing current, I like to be on the side where the water is flowing out towards. So um, in this scenario, like I said, bay to beach front, right out here. And the reason for that is because one of the main points to fishing current is that a lot of bait is being pushed through the current and the fish are waiting on the downward side of that for the bait to get pushed right to them, right? Fish are smart. Instead of chasing something down, why wouldn't they just stack up around the current and wait for bait to come to them, okay? So that's a reason fishing current can be so productive. So now when you're fishing current, usually on the side where the tide is flowing through, like I said, water is flowing that way, you will have things called eddies. That's where the water is coming out away from here and it circles back around and it just feeds back into there. But what happens right here is a little dead zone where there's not a lot of water movement, okay? And that happens on both sides of it. So where there's not a lot of water movement is where a lot of those fish like to stack up. So we'll use red. We'll use this red expo right here to mark our fish. So we're just gonna mark our fish. There'll be little lines. That's gonna be a fish. That'll be a fish. That'll be a fish. You know, on the same thing on the other side, you'll have fish stacked up all in here. And really they'll stack up all the way down the current. We'll go ahead and mark that all the way down. So that's gonna be your fish right there. And what these fish are doing is they are just waiting on the outside of that current. Instead of laying right in the middle, fighting the current the whole time, they're laying on the outside and waiting for that bait to get pushed through and then just jumping in there, grabbing it, coming back out, or waiting for that bait to come out and try to find its way out of the current. And you know, the bait's scurrying out of it like this, come this way, and they just jump right up and get it and go back down and wait for another one, okay? So as a fisherman right here, this little, remember this little block X is me, I like to let that current drift my lure. I think that is one of the most productive ways to fish current. Now you could fish a super heavy jig head or a really heavy Carolina rig and have it right on bottom and it won't move. But what I think the best thing to do to find fish is to let that current drift your lure and let it act naturally as if it is a bait fish being pushed with the water. So, so I'll make a long cast across like this all the way to the other side and let it drift down. And eventually it's gonna pass up by one of these fish, right? This is gonna be my angle that my line is going. And one of these fish is gonna bite it if it's hungry, if it's willing. But that's the idea right there. So long cast across the current, let your lure drift down, and hopefully it passes by one of those hungry fish sitting on the edge. Now in the video, I went into depth on how I like to work my lure. I'm not really gonna explain that right now. I'll just be super simple with it. I like to fish soft plastics. I like to just jig them up, let the current carry it, let it fall back down, jig them up off the bottom again, let it carry it and fall back down. The weight of your lure is very important here. If you use a super heavy jig head, it's not gonna drift. You can still catch fish like that, but and I feel like it's not as natural. If you use a super light jig head, it's not gonna get down as much. A lot of times, like in the boat cut, I don't know exactly how deep it is, but in the middle, it's probably pretty deep. And a lot of places where you have current, it's gonna be pretty deep, right? So uh, just for example, let's just say this is 10 feet deep right here, okay? And then out off the back here into the sides, maybe it's four feet, okay? So I'll say this is all four feet, four feet. Miss a T on that one. And then we'll say around it, it is also four feet deep. Like I said, I don't know if this is accurate for the boat cut out there, but we're just guessing. Okay. 
So we have a 10 foot deep channel and we have a shallow area all the way around it. And we're casting up onto the other side and letting it drift back down in it. And if you were to make a shorter cast, let's say you cast right up here into the middle of the current, let it drift down. A lot of times there will be fish that are sitting on both sides of the current. It's all of our fish lined up, okay, waiting for a bait to come by. So you make a shorter cast fish up here, your line is gonna drift back down. And then you know you reel back in and cast again. But right there where you get your bite just like up here you get your bite around here out here really wherever okay obviously they're not lined up in a line single file waiting for something to come up they might be schooled around this area or schooled down in here or schooled up here or schooled right in the little nooks and cranny right up next to the rocks okay ideally those fish are sitting around it or sitting down right on the edges and they're just waiting for bait to come by now the reason i like to use a medium sized jig head if i was throwing a 1 8 it would just float right on by if i'm throwing a really heavy one it's going to sink straight to the bottom I want some that can get down past the bait. So usually when I'm fishing current, depending on the depth, but so in the bays, it's usually like five or six or seven foot of water, right? And maybe less, maybe more, depending on the area. But those fish will wait on the edges. And if there's a school bait going over it, they might not come up and blow up on all that bait, but they might wait for one to just trickle on down by or an injured bait fish to float down by them. Or they'll wait on a mullet to get away from the rest of the school and you know venture off a little bit. And that's the one that they're going for. So that's why I like to use a jig head that sinks down a little bit and isn't just ripping right through the water. Cause I feel like that presentation, that falling motion is what those fish are looking for. They're laying down in the water a little bit, bait's coming over them. They wait for one to float down, grab it, done. So anyways, what I'm trying to get at right here is that when fishing current like this, I like to get on one side of it, either side will work. The side that the water is flowing out towards and I like to make casts across it. And you just make a bunch of casts, bunch of different areas and try to find those fish. Now, another thing I like to note is that a lot of times when fishing channels and stuff like this, uh, this is true of the boat cut too, is that you'll have this deep channel, but then at the end of it out here, so 50 yards away from it, maybe less, maybe more, it depends on where you are, that channel starts to come up like this, okay? And it gets up on a little shelf and then it joins the rest of the water. So you have this 10 foot deep channel, it comes up and the rest of that water is, you know, like I said, four feet deep out here. So a lot of times those fish will also sit at the back of the gut out here. They'll be marked all around here. There's a fish, there's a fish. They might sit up on top of it. They might sit going up it. You never really know. And that's why it's important to cast in multiple areas until you find them. And once you do find them, you can usually repeat that cast and you can catch a whole bunch of them because like I said earlier, they just stack up in one area a lot of the times. Okay, so this is what I like to do for a fishing current. And this was my diagram of the boat cut. And I'm gonna erase all this and I'm gonna show you as if I'm fishing a back lake because another spot I go to quite often that you'll see in the videos quite often is a back lake that drains out into the bay. And I'm gonna draw that area for y'all and show you how I like to fish the current there. Same concept, just a different location, but I'll repeat it anyways. I'm gonna draw another example for y'all right here. So this is my awesome grass line. This is my back lake back here, my little marshy area. And then this is just the open bay, okay? So in this particular spot, you have a deep channel, surprisingly deep, running right here. And what it does is it comes out and it just completely goes away. It just goes up like that onto a super shallow oyster bed. So this is all gonna be oyster out here. Okay, and there's, that, there's scattered oyster everywhere, but where it comes up, it goes onto a nice shallow oyster reef, oyster bed, whatever you wanna call it, that extends probably about 50 yards in every single direction, okay? So this is all oyster. We usually come out from this side right here and we like to stand right about here. And just like the other spot, this spot also has eddies coming out around it, right? Every time there's current, you're gonna have an eddy if there's something breaking up that current. So, right, we have our eddies coming out like right there. And on this side too, we're gonna show an outgoing tide here where the water is flowing from the back lake out into the bay. So, your water is moving right to left. We're right here. And just like the last one, I like to make long casts across the current and even scatter up. You know, sometimes I'll make a short cast up in here, longer cast onto that side, short cast up in here, and I let all those drift back down. So this one will drift back down right like this. This one will drift down maybe onto the front of that oyster. This one will drift down right here. There might be another eddy over here because there's oyster back there, but that's something for another day. But a lot of those fish stack up just like they do at the last spot. They'll stack up in that eddy. All right, there's some fish. They'll stack up on the other side where it goes up out of the gut or maybe in the four foot of water range. Um, let's say this is like seven, eight feet again. And then this is like two feet to all the sides, right? So they'll stack up over here, right in front of you. And then a lot of times at this spot too, they'll stack up on the oyster way out on the back. Just like I explained at the boat cut where it goes up out of the boat cut and the channel just kind of dissipates and it just joins the rest of the beach. 
It's exactly what you have here, except in this case, it's oyster and not sand. So a lot of times those fish will stack up over here and wait for that water to rush over that oyster. This oyster is maybe only two feet, three feet deep at max, no higher than your waist ever. Um, and a lot of those fish will sit there because what you have is you have your bait fish that are being pushed out of here, exactly what we're trying to imitate with our lure, but you have your bait fish that are being pushed out of here and they hit that oyster and those fish are just waiting on that oyster for them to come up. It's way easier for a fish to grab a piece of bait in two feet of water than it is for them to grab it in eight foot of water, right? And that's the idea behind fishing current, guys. So, so I hope that these diagrams helped some of y'all out, and I hope that it wasn't too confusing. Um, I just did it to the best of my ability, and I hope that y'all learned something from it. Now, if you're just here for the fishing part, this is probably a little bit boring. Now, if you did find this useful, I wanted to let y'all know that I started a Patreon last month, and starting in September, so tomorrow, I will be posting on it at least a couple times a week, and I will be making videos like this, more informational style videos to hopefully help some of y'all catch more fish and just learn tips and tricks like this. So if y'all want to check it out, I'll have a link down below. Just go on Patreon and it's Before Outdoors, just like the YouTube name. And uh, maybe consider joining it because like I said, more informational videos like this. I also do a weekly fishing forecast on there. Kind of just telling y'all how I expect the fishing to be for the week. And I'm also going to be doing monthly giveaways. So check out if you're interested. Thanks so much to everyone who does. And let's go ahead and jump right into the fishing part of this video. So I know I said we were going to be trolling for Spanish mackerel today, and that's the goal. But we got out here, the water's not too clean right now. Quite a bit of wind, it's supposed to die out. Uh, so we just pulled up to the boat cut, right? Everyone knows this spot, the boat cut out at the North Jetty. And we stopped here because it's not often that you come out here and you don't see any other boats fishing it. So we decided we'd try to fish it. We have a good current moving out through here. So I already have one speckled trout in the box. And I just want to show you what I'm doing. So this is what I do a lot of times when I fish current, whether that's coming out of a bayou, out of a back lake, out of whatever, any type of current. Um, I like to take a 1 4 ounce jig head, depending on how strong the current is in the water depth, or a 1 8 And what I'll do is I'll cast up into the middle of the current, just like that. And usually where there's current, there's a little bit of a deeper section. We know that's true out here. I'll cast up into the middle of the current, and I'll let it sink for a minute. Let it get down there. And then instead of just your normal pop, pop, sink, pop, pop, sink, what I'll do is I'll let it get down there, and I'll give it one twitch. And I'll let the current pick that bait up and move it. So just imagine you pop your bait up off the bottom, and the current slides it down and it goes back down to the bottom. Pop your bait up, back down to the bottom. There's a bite right there. Oh, I was on cue. But a lot of times those fish are sitting on the edges of this current waiting for something to just float by them. So we're just trying to replicate that just by lifting out the bait, pop it up, the bait comes up and drifts back down. And a lot of times you get bit on that fall right there or occasionally it'll be heavy whenever you lift up. But a lot of times you'll feel that tap on the fall. Then you just set the heck out of the hook. It can be hard to keep them pinned because, you know, current. But yeah, this is what I like to do. And sometimes you'll feel a real heavy, just absolute thump, but you'll feel it in the rod. And then other times because your line gets, there's one. That feels like a trout, that's a nice trout. Trout number three for me. Probably not a keeper, actually, honestly, it's probably just app. We'll go ahead and let him go. I kept the first one. It was just over 15 because he was dead. Hooked him right. Oh, and he's gone. Hooked him right in the uh, gills. He swallowed it pretty hard. So let's try that again. But yeah, you got to really be paying attention. I like to use braided line for this. You really got to be paying attention because the current will move your line on top of the water. So you'll get a lot of slack. So when you pop it up, sometimes you just feel just a very little tap. But that doesn't mean it's a small fish. another bite oh i missed them again man they're out here but yeah we're just gonna do this and see if we can catch some trout maybe we'll be able to pull a limit out here you never know there's definitely some in here but they all seem to be around that 14 15 inch range i like to use a smaller profile bait but yeah something small it doesn't even have to have a paddle tail as you can see this doesn't uh the reason i do that is because you use a big bait sometimes they'll pick it up too much and it's hard to get down in the bottom in the current stuff like that and i don't even know if this is completely on the bottom but i know it's now farther if I was just working it fast. And usually when you find the fish, you just keep repeating that cast and they'll all just be schooled up down there. So let's see if we can get on some good ones. It's always fun 
my fishing cart because even the little ones like this always feel a lot bigger. There's a super little guy. The good news is they're all specs, so pop them off, get them back in as quick as we can. Okay. Let's try again. So, like I said, once you usually, once you find the fish, you usually find a lot more stacked in the same spot. So what you can do to help you find them is, I mean, sometimes you never know where they're going to be. Sometimes they'll be sitting right at the beginning of the current. Sometimes they'll be sitting way off the back where it comes up over a shelf or whatever. Uh, that's what you'll see a lot of time when there's oyster, oh, ladyfish or something. And sometimes, like today, they're sitting right in the middle. Is going to try to do the same thing now. It's important to keep your rod high after you pop it so you can feel them come by and smack it. Hey, and he's on. Dude, that's a good fish. Looky there, his first cast with the lure. He hooked on something big. That's going to have to be a big old red. <laughs> They're not going to spool you, is it? No way. The boat coming through the boat cut and he's on. This fish is out in the middle of the cut and this boat's running too. Hopefully they don't get caught in the motor. No, okay, cool. And he happened to bring his fish out on this side of the cut. Get the net. This fish is just holding right here. I'm betting it's just a bull red. Man, that's some weird head shakes it's doing. It's just down there in the current going like this. What was that? A foul hook stingray. What is up with us and catching stingrays? There's like a cow nose ray right here. We're gonna pop that hook out and get him on his way. Catch him up that way on the other side. I'm probably doubled up on trout. Yeah, doubled up on specs. Well, he is a spec. Let's see what this one is. It's also a spec. Schooly specs. There we go. Two of them in the boat. Oh, mine's off. Ah, they're both jumping everywhere. They're beating themselves up. Chill. Let's get the measurement. This guy is probably 14. Oh, you can squeeze his tail, make him 15. We don't do that. He's gone. <laughs> 